Hi there, and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on linear regression in Stata. So today we're going to be looking at a data set known as Census 13 that is already in Stata, and here is the code to pull that up. I want to show you what it looks like. It's census data. So by state we have birth rate, population, median age, and some other variables. What I would like to demonstrate today is a regression of the independent variable of median age on the dependent variable of population. Before we do the regression, let's do a quick Pearson correlation to look at the strength of the linear relationship between these two variables. We see that at a pretty low P here, they are significant. The R value here is 0.3294. And that tells us, because it's positive, that as population goes up, so does the median age. So we could probably interpret this as suggesting that states with higher populations also had a higher median age. Now we might want to quantify that relationship a little bit further. And that is where linear regression comes in. Using the code that I've highlighted here, we have actually quantified population as a function of median age. So what we see here is that for one, every one extra year in the median age of a state's population, the population itself goes up by about 917,000 people. Uh, we do see that the model is significant. We have an R squared here of 0 0.1085, which tells us that about 11% of the variation in population is predicted by the variation in median age. We have p-values for the constant and the independent variable, a standard error, t-values and confidence intervals. Depending on your reporting style, whether it's APA or another format, you might need to use one or several of these values in your reporting. Now the next step I would like to engage in is to just show you a scatter plot here and let me go back and highlight this code for you so you see what I did. It's a two-way graph and the LFIT CI command gives you the line of best fit, which is this blue line here, which is actually the OLS line. And you also have the confidence interval off that line here expressed in gray. And these green values are, of course, the population of the states that we're looking at. So this graph would be quite helpful in illustrating your results. Um, let's go through some of the assumptions here of linear regression, however, because we're not quite done. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that these two variables that we've used are normally distributed. For that, we'll tend to use the Shapiro-Wilk test. And the command for that here you can see is S-Wilk. The column that's important here is probability. If the number here is below 0 0.05, that variable is not normally distributed. And you will need to take some actions to, to rectify that. What's normally done is the use of a log transformation and here you can see that I'm using the ln command in Stata, which is a natural log transformation. I've created a new variable called ln pop, which is the natural log transformed variation of population. Well, why would I do that? Ordinarily, log transformation can lead to normalization of distribution, and that's exactly what happened here. As you can see, the probability value for ln pop is now over 0 0.05, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. So what we would do next is we would just run a new regression, and this time we would substitute the log transformed population variable as our dependent variable. As you can see, a couple of good things happened. The f value went up. Uh, it became a little bit more significant. And we also have a higher r squared here. So we have gone from explaining about 11% of the variation to 16%, which is certainly an improvement. Why don't we graph it one more time so that we can see what the relationship looks like. Notice in my code here that I have substituted the log transformed version of this variable so that that's what we're pulling up and not the original population variable. It looks like this. So here we've, uh, we've gone through the basic things that you need to be mindful of in a linear regression, how to interpret the results, how to generate some supporting graphs, and you also learned how to normalize some no non-normally distributed variables. 
Um, we want to do one more thing here, and that is a het test, what, what Stata calls het test, and that is a test for heteroscedasticity. That is another important measure uh, and another important assumption of regression. And what we want to have happen here is we want this probability to be higher than 0 0.05. So having conducted this final step, we can say that um, you know the errors are distributed the way we want them to be and the variables are now normally distributed you could go ahead and report these results now in APA or any format that you choose I hope this tutorial was useful for you there are some more uh, kinks that can come up when you are doing linear regression but for most students the kind of uh, procedures I've demonstrated here are pretty much sufficient uh, I do recommend you check out 272analytics.com for our free uh, guidelines to statistical procedures, not just in Stata, but SPSS and numerous other packages as well. And we also offer consulting on Chapter 4, Chapter 3, pretty much any kind of quantitative methodology or data analysis for really any kind of academic work whatsoever. We are experts and we can help you. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day.